story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Norway Chess 2014, being played from June 3rd through June 13th, 2014, with a great, great players, many of the top ten in the world. It's going to be a great tournament. Hi, folks. John Cordisco back again. Another game from round one of Norway Chess 2014 between 11 Aronian. I believe he's number two in the world now, over 2,800, 2,815. And Seaman Augustine. Seaman is a Norwegian. An ex-football player, what we call soccer here in the United States. Uh, I guess he had some injuries years ago. He's quite a famous player in Norway. And he's Magnus Carlsen's old coach. And he's playing. Seaman is 26-28, so he's pretty outclassed here. Let's see how he does. Aronian's white. Augustine is black. D4. It's going to be a Queen's Indian. E6, B6, you pretty much see this. G2, bishop checks, bishop blocks, A5. Pretty standard stuff. If white does take, and after pawn takes, pawn here, and you've got a pretty good, pretty good pawn mass coming up on the queen side. Knight C3. Black castles, white castles. I've got my Fritz 13 computer on off screen. It's about a third of a pawn advantage, maybe a little bit more for white. Pretty much standard stuff in the opening. You know, it's funny if you just set up the pieces in their beginning places and run the Fritz computer. I believe white has a .25 pawn advantage <laughs> even before the game starts. So take it for what it's worth. D6. Queen to C2. Knight on B to D7. Now, some commentators are talking about Seaman Augustine. He's a little bit older than a lot of the people here. Uh, I believe he's in his 40s, which is not old at all because I'm 57, but it's a little bit older for chess. And they were talking about Seaman likes to take chances. He likes interesting positions. We'll see how this works out. Rook. Bishop finally takes. Bishop takes. Bishop D4. Now, White has the bishop pair, and it's Levin Aronian. Huh. Good luck with that. We'll see what happens. Queen moves. That's a really good queen bishop, I guess, uh, attack going down on the A1, H8 diagonal, right on black's king. Pawn, rook, H6. Interesting, he would weaken that position. I guess he didn't want the knight to come here to hit the bishop. There's a bishop, but he wouldn't have many good places to go, frankly. Bishop to f1. Now he's starting to move the knight without losing his bishop. b5, bishop d2. Well, that's interesting because he's Got an interesting attack on the h6 pawn. B takes, B takes, rook to e8. Computer had thought if one c5 instead, queen to a3 is a good response to that. After rook to e8, rook e to d1, <clears throat> queen c7. Try to get your queen off to follow the rooks, but he's got both files. How do you do that? And where do you put it? Here? I mean, it's kind of awkward, but that's a pretty solid position for, for black, I do have to say. Trying to get through is going to be tough. <clears throat> Excuse me. Queen to a3. c5. If rook had gone to d8 and after bishop b4, e5, bishop d2 would be the computer's suggested moves. After c5, d takes, d takes, knight to e1. Now the computer did that. That's what the knight is aiming for. It's aiming to go to g2, e3, and eventually d5 if it can. 
Bishop b7, <clears throat> excuse me, f3. Interesting choice by Aronia. Weaken, weakening his kingside pawns a little bit, but you see black's kings on g1 is on a dark square, and black does not have a dark square bishop, so that's probably okay. e5, e4, just to close it up. Right now, white's light squared bishop isn't really doing much. He'll get back in the game. After e4, it's about three-fourths of a pawn advantage for white. Nothing really to, to write home about. I think Augustine is, is holding his own against the Ronian. It's one of the top four players in the world. Knight to f8. Now, it's showing the route that black wants. He wants to do the e6 to d4 route. Very similar we talked about with the knight on e1. Knight to g2, here it comes. Knight to e6, knight to e3, knight to d4, knight to d5. So the, the knights did all they're running. And they're in really good spots on the board. That knight on d4 is really good. The knight on d5 is also very good. Magnus doesn't take it. He goes queen to d6. He doesn't take it with a bishop. That would be a, that would be a little tough. He'd have the two bishops against the two knights. And I think that would give white too much of an advantage. King to g2. If bishop had taken a5 after queen to a6, that's it. You lose the piece. So those three pawns aren't so free. Blackhead played take on move 27 instead after king to g2. C takes. It's just, it's just not too good. After king to g2, knight to d7. He's bringing the knight around. He wants to trade off that knight, knight for knight, instead of bishop for knight. Black started to get a pretty good active position here. Rook to b1. Rook to b8 from e. King to f2. Now, computer has suggestion if bishop had gone to c3, knight to c2, queen to c1, knight d4. What a small advantage for white. Nothing really to write home about. I think... Same one, Augustine is doing very well against the Rodian. Makes you want to play the Queen's Indian. Bishop c3. If Rook had taken, after Rook takes, Bishop d3. Everybody says, well, you know, that Bishop is basically doing useless there. It's just guarding pawns. Well, it's guarding two very important pawns. f5. E takes. Bishop takes. C takes. Queen takes, and a computer gives that position is dead even, even with a bishop pair. After bishop c3, rook b4, bishop takes, pawn takes. Now that's kind of a weird position there. We've got an isolated pawn on c4 for white. His a pawn is backward. It's a tiny advantage right now on the computer for black, so Simon Augustine is doing very well. Queen to b2. Bishop takes, c pawn takes. Not as good as e pawn takes, because after knight to b6, he's going to have a hard time guarding that c4 pawn. After c takes, knight, and you can see now, there's really no threat against the pawn anymore because this pawn is guarding it. And this knight got a nice pawn chain here. Rook b to c1, knight to a4, queen to d2, knight c3, a lot of knight maneuvering. Now, in case you missed it, white is up the exchange, and the computer shows it as dead even on the score. So good for good for Seaman, Magnus Carlsen's old coach. Rook takes, pawn takes. It's good sometimes to do that, where you're up the exchange, but giving it back is also good as well, and that's what I think happened here. Rook takes. Rook to d2, as we can see this starting to fizzle out. Queen takes, queen to b6. Bishop to c4, that's a good spot for that bishop too. g5, and king to g2. And this is where they agreed to a draw. I think that was a good choice. I don't think it was any grandmaster draw by any means. We're on move 41. They fought it out, and I think a draw is a proper 
result. And so good for Seaman Augustine, Magnus Carlson's old coach, and drawing Levin Aronian. And he was almost 200 points lower rated than Aronian. So bravo to Seaman. So that's one of the games from round one. I hope you liked it. More games will be coming up. Uh, you can watch it live. I'm not sure what time it starts. Probably around 10 o'clock or so Eastern Standard Time here in the States. NorwayChess.com. And I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction.